Hey everyone, today in this episode we're going to be talking about three of my favorite methods to catch fish from the pier. If you use any of these three methods on the pier and there are fish at the pier, then you're bound to catch something. We are here on a private pier fishing the riverside of Florida. And joining us are two subscribers, Morgan and Austin, who we've invited to go fishing with us. We've been fishing with them before, and we learned that Morgan is a lucky charm. She pretty much outfishes everyone. Morgan wins the whole thing! As I knew she would. All right, sure. whoa. <laughs> Morgan and Austin will be fishing with the first method we'll be talking about today. Plastic lures. So if you're just starting to get into fishing with little swim baits, I would recommend throwing a 1 4th ounce jig head and a DOA brand swim bait, some flukes. Whatever looks like a small little bait fish will work. It doesn't need to be any particular brand. As long as it's a small little bait fish, you should be good. When you're putting the swim bait onto the jig head, we get a lot of questions about this and I see a lot of people fail on this. So I'm gonna show you really simply. First off, see where the hook needs to come out of the bait by lining it up like this and marking it with your finger, okay? Then when you push the hook through, push it out of where your fingers are, marking it, right? So now it'll sit evenly and perfectly on the jig head. The way I, ooh, look at that, <laughs> caught myself. So I like to fish these in a lot of different ways. There's not just one way to fish a swim bait. What we recommend trying is casting it out, letting it sink to the bottom, and just working it back slowly, jigging it up and down. Um, but there are many other ways to do it. You can cast it, let it sink, flip it back up, let it sink, flip it back up, let it sink. You can cast it out, bring it back fast. You can cast it out, let it sink, bring it back fast. There's so many different ways, and I want you guys to try all those different ways. If the fish aren't biting one way, they might be biting another way. Let's see how Morgan and Austin do. Oh, oh. 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 that's a giant whiting. Whoa! <laughs> that's, oh my goodness. That is like the biggest whiting I've ever seen in my entire life. No, seriously, what even? I thought it was a little redfish. I thought it was a little redfish too. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh man, that's awful. <laughs> Did you poop all over oh, you? Oh, totally did, yeah. No. Awesome. Sweetness. Oh, he's so not gonna eat that. Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. You don't, I, if you weren't, I was. That's a, that's, right here. Do it. So, the second method, one of my favorite methods because it's so easy the Sabiki rig. They come in all sorts of different sizes depending on how big of a fish you want to catch. See, this one right here is size 14 hooks with bigger flies, but this is much smaller. Size 11, this is even smaller, size six. So this is what the Sabiki rig looks like. You see all these flies tied on here? Take a look at these flies. So this bait rig works really well, but depending on where you're from, you may not be allowed to have six to eight hooks. So what I like to do is I like to cut it so that I only use the legal amount. So I would usually just cut it at two hooks and then tie a sinker down here. And there's so many ways to fish a sabiki rig. Uh, it doesn't work just, it doesn't just work on a pier, it works all sorts of different places. Because these little flies, they look like little shrimp, little fish, there's a lot of little things that can be shaped like this underwater. And um, fish love it. You, you can use bait or you could not use bait and just use the fly. But I usually like to use bait. The top of the rig is a two-way swivel and then it has six flies attached. And then the bottom is a snap swivel for a sinker. Now for something this small, I would use a half ounce sinker. Two ounce, three ounce would be way too heavy. So it's important to match your sinker size. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be dropping it by pillars because pillars are a really good source of, of small bait fish, of, of barnacles, of lots of different life. And we find that a lot of fish like to hide by the pillars. So it's as simple as baiting this up and dropping it down. Uh, you got it. Ah. 
And I what's that? Little sand perch. Same thing. I don't know. So my dad and I are both also using live bait and this leads us to our final method Live bait fishing. So I'm going to show you guys how I tie a live bait fishing rig This is just one method and I'm going to be using the Senko Skipper Pier Fishing Adventure Guide So for those of you who are beginners to pier fishing and you really need help getting started This is going to be a really great resource for you It includes an entire adventure guide that's laminated so you can put it in your backpack and it tells you step by step how to start catching fish off the pier starting with how to tie this rig this isn't just a tutorial on how to tie rigs this is a tutorial on how to choose your bait how to choose your sinkers how to choose your hook size how to find fish at the pier and this kit includes all the tackle that you need to tie the rigs we're talking about and if you want a kit for yourself there's a link in the description below or if you want to just read the guide, we have a PDF form also in the link below. So I hope this helps anyone who needs help. Let's get to tying the rig. So what you're going to need for this rig is a bead, a swivel, an egg sinker, and a size 2 hook. And this all comes in the kit. And it comes with a 20 pound leader line, but I'm going to tie with just with this this neon line just because uh, it's a lot easier to see. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut yourself two to three feet of leader line, monofilament, fluorocarbon, whichever one you want to use. Next, you're going to want to tie your hook on. In the adventure guide, we recommend using the improved clinch knot. So I'm just going to tie this real quick. So that's the improved clinch right here. This is a pretty strong knot. Now what you're gonna wanna do is tie your, uh, your swivel onto the end of this line. And again, use the, using the improved clinch knot. Now, you're going to be attaching it to your main line. So this is your spool line, okay? What you're going to want to do is put your egg sinker through. And in the kit, we include a two ounce egg sinker, which is what I would normally recommend. And we're going to put a bead through. Okay? And I'm going to show you why we use a bead in a second. Now attach this with another improved clinch. Make sure you trim all your line. Okay, so now here's why we use the bead right here. If we didn't have this bead, this would be knocking around on this knot to the point where it might break the knot. So the bead is there to protect it from the sinker and from any line damage. Not necessary, but very helpful. And that's the basic rig right here. So your live bait will go on here, the end of your line, and when you cast it out, right the sinker will stay in one spot and the fish is able to be moved around and predator fish are able to eat it without detecting the tension of the line since it's stuck on the ground see how it slides all right let's see it work in action I want a small one though I want a small one too that's a pinfish yeah I'll use this one all right, so there's a lot of different places to hook a live bait. In the nose, between the eyes, on the top lip, on the shoulder, on the back of it. I'm gonna try the back this time. Why? I just feel like um, I have a higher hookup ratio that way, but I'm not sure. Fish. No, it, it, it might be a redfish, Dad. 
You gotta have faith. Okay, here comes. Oh, look at that slime. Ugh. That kingfish is going to have PTSD. You just spent 60 seconds in a stomach of a catfish. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> he's, he's done for, man. <laughs> oh. Well. That's a big sail catfish. Whoa. Is that called sail catfish? Yeah. Yeah, what do you want to do? Strong one, huh? That's a big one. Wow, that's a nice looking catfish. Beautiful. Perfect, huh? Beautiful. Oh, ho, ho. Wow. Wow, beautiful. Look at the whiskers on him. Take a picture. So the plastic baits worked really well to catch lots of different kinds of fish. And the sabikis worked pretty well. I mean, I caught one fish, but I didn't really try that hard. I know the sabiki will work really well. But the, the live bait rig, that was getting snatched up left and right. That was very consistent. So I want to take this time to let you guys know, sabiki rigs work really well, but look at how messy they can get. They can get very tangled very quickly. And it's important that you be careful when you're fishing with these. You don't want this to get trapped under the ocean and, and sea creatures getting stuck in it. So what I suggest is maybe not using all six of the hooks and being extra careful when you use a sabiki rig. Another thing that you should note is that after you're done using any line, um, it's really important that you cut that line up because a big tangled ball of line will kill a lot of different things in the ocean. So we need to do our part and protect the ocean because we want to maintain this resource for not just us but for future fishermen. If you're catching fish left and right and you're keeping them and not eating them, that makes a really big impact on the fish ecosystem. So if you're not eating the fish that you catch, please just throw them back. If they're this big, just throw them back and you're not going to eat it, don't just kill it for no reason. It's really important that we, we moderate how much fish we take out of this ocean. If everyone took all the fish they caught, we wouldn't be fishing anymore. So I know in some countries there's no laws at all governing how many fish you can take, how big of a fish you can take, what kind of fishing you do, but it can, you can make a difference by spreading the word, don't take the fish that you don't want to eat, and if they're really small, let them go, let them grow. Keep that in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If anybody needs extra help, we have a beginner crash course right here. It's called the Senko Skipper Pier Fishing Adventure Kit. Comes with all the tackle that you need. We just want to help put you on some fish. The link for the kit is in the description below, but we do not ship internationally. I'm sorry, but we have a solution.
we have uploaded the PDF, download and print yourself so that you can have this guide with you anytime you need help. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.